So today I am in Colchester in Essex and I'm going to be shooting some portraits. I'm meeting up with a model, her name is Lydia. And yeah, I've brought my uh, Mamiya RB67 along with me and although I am going to take a few film portraits, I've got some Lobo 100 with me and some Ilford FB4 that's already loaded in the camera left over from yesterday. Although I'm going to be doing that as well, predominantly this video is about shooting both um, portraits and video with the Fujifilm X-D4, which I'm filming with now. So I picked this up recently, last week actually, and yeah, I picked it up predominantly for video work. I did some research and, you know, found out that obviously the Fuji X-D4 is good because it's got IBIS and it's an upgrade from the X-D3s I've been using, but also that the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens is a really good lens for video. Now over the past week, I've tested out a little bit for video, um, just with my family but I've also tested it out with some stills photography and actually it's a really good lens for stills as well you know it's really sharp lens 18 to 35 millimeter because it's APS-C is full frame equivalent of around 24 to 50 millimeters which is a good focal range the lens has got a really good close focusing distance you know it's f1.8 so it's got some good depth of field too so I thought today I would just kind of really test out the camera and the lens and kind of see how well I can you know get some portraits and some b-roll at the same time the fuji xt4 has now got like a dedicated stills movie switch so you can easily switch between the two and it saves like your custom settings for both stills and video so i just kind of really wanted to test that out and kind of get used to using it a bit more especially before i start getting back into weddings and using it for professional work so yeah that's all today is about going to meet up with lydia take some portraits film some video piece it all together and then um, I'll come back afterwards and just kind of chat about my opinions. So I'm just going to finish off this video quickly by just giving you my opinions and what I thought about using this setup for both video and for stills. So we'll talk stills first. As you can see from the photos, it is a good lens for stills. It's nice and sharp. The autofocus with the uh, fringer adapter is really, really quick. I don't think, to be honest with you, I'd notice any difference from using that and a native lens. It just works as if it was a native lens. The lens is big though, and for me, 
when it comes to shooting steels, I much prefer shooting primes. I mean, the whole reason I moved to Fujifilm in the first place was the form factor, you know, having it nice and small and discreet and not killing your back, you know, carrying around the camera. Personally, I pretty much stick to shooting uh, the 23 1.4 and the 56 1.2 when it comes to shooting steels photography, just because they're my favorite focal lengths, the equivalent of 35 millimeter and 85 millimeter. And that's just kind of my go-to setup for shooting steel photography. And yes, it's nice to have a zoom. This covers the range of 24 to 50 millimeter in full frame terms. So it's nice to have that all covered. But for me, it's just too big, too heavy, um, not ideal to be carrying around, you know. When I first got into digital photography, I shot zooms, as most people do. Most cameras come with a kit lens, which is a zoom, you know. But I soon realized that primes are just, you know, obviously they're lighter, you get a, a lower aperture, so a better depth of field. And in my opinion, sharper. I think that, I don't know whether it's something to do with the zooming mechanism and there's a reason behind it, but I do just find that they're always that little bit sharper than what you'll get with a zoom lens. So yes, it is nice for stills photography and if you're a zoom shooter and you like that sort of 24 to 50 millimeter, you know, field of view, then this is a great lens. And you, if you're a Fuji shooter as well, all their native zoom lenses, you're looking at, you know, 2.8 at best for your um, aperture. Whereas this goes to 1.8 and you can keep it 1.8 throughout the 24 to 50 millimeter uh, range. So it is a really good lens for stills, just it's not for me, it's too big and it kind of just cancels out the whole point of having a Fuji camera, in my opinion, for still photography. But when it comes to shooting video, I think that's actually when this lens comes into its own. Now, I mentioned that it's heavy, and obviously, yes, the Fuji X-T4 has got Ibis on it, but I think having something like a heavy lens really helps to stabilize when you're using the camera. Like, I've got this handle, um, just like a small rig, handle that goes into the hot shoe and yes I'm looking to expand my sort of small rig setup maybe get a cage and a screen and bits and bobs like that but this just helps to kind of balance it out so the weight is obviously pulling it down and then you're using your hand to kind of put it back up and it kind of just helps to really like smooth that footage as you're kind of walking and moving along with the camera if you had like a smaller lighter lens on there it might be a little bit more wobbly but this just kind of helps to keep it really smooth as you're moving. So that definitely helps. Obviously, again, being a 24 to 50 sort of focal length on the camera, it's a nice focal range for sort of YouTube, to be honest with you, for just kind of walking around, zooming and filming things. So obviously the footage that I showed of Lydia was kind of all quick and stuff, and I didn't really do too much kind of walking and filming shots. I did a couple of little bits. But I went out uh, the other day and I met up with a couple of film photographers in London just because I'm filming the next episode of Photo Walk and Talk and I'm meeting up with a few film photographers for that. And yeah, I did a lot of sort of walking and filming and taking advantage of the zoom lens and stuff. And definitely you can, you can see the difference of using the X-T3 and using the X-T4 for walking around sort of footage shots. Yes, it's still a little bit shaky because I'm walking and moving, but compared to the X-T3, you know, that sort of footage from there was almost unusable in my opinion. So yeah, if you want smooth footage, you're still gonna have to use a gimbal with this, but it is a vast improvement on the Fujifilm X-T3 for sure. Now for me, where this camera comes into its own is having that dedicated stills and movie switch and being able to save your settings for each function. So I could be literally filming something and say, oh, I quickly wanna take a picture of that, that looks good. Just flick the switch, take a picture, flick it back, get to filming, you know, that's, that's probably the most beneficial and simplest thing in this camera. Just one little change, which really makes it a good camera for YouTubers, for people that do filming and video, you know, family documentary photographers. Like I'm probably gonna try and do a video using a prime lens, like maybe the 16 millimeter or the 23 millimeter. Cause I did a, a, a video of me and the family we went to Dorset uh, a while ago and I did like a family sort of movie switch been, switching between video and stills with the Fujifilm X100V. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it above, definitely watch that. Um, and yeah, it was great. I just enjoyed being able to switch between stills and video and kind of just document my family. But it's much more trickier switching between stills and video on a Fujifilm X100V. Like if you've got one, you've kind of got to go to the drive setting 
go up, go down, change it. You know, it's not having that switch and having Ibis on this, I think it's gonna make it a much better family sort of documentary camera. So I might do uh, another video going forward just comparing the X100V to this for like family documentary photography and video. So final opinions, yes, it's a great setup for video. Would I use the lens going forwards for stills? No, probably not. Uh, maybe if I was shooting video and I wanted to get a quick snap, I'd use the switch, take a picture and then switch back. But I'm definitely not gonna go out my way to use this lens for photography and stills going forwards. However, for video, I think it's a really nice setup. It's perfect for kind of my needs. The autofocus is great on it. The uh, F1.8 aperture on it is great for video and stuff as well. And um, yeah, although it's got a bit of weight to it, it's not too bad compared to some video setups. And I'm excited to see kind of what I can get out of it going forwards. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, really appreciate everyone who watches and subscribes and comments and all that junk. And um, yeah, I've got another video coming next week, which is an update on my project. And then uh, yeah, a few more things lined up for after that. Thanks for watching and uh, see you guys soon.